Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Avengers, issue number 14. All right, the War of the Vampires begins right now. All right, so what do we got here? We got Jason Aaron writing and David Marquez on art, the fall of the House of Dracula, by the way. Uh, color artists, Justin Ponser and Eric Archianega. VC's Corey Petit is on letters, and the cover is David Marquez and Justin Ponser. The variant cover, you know what, there's a lot of variant covers deal with it. Graphic designer Carlos Lau and Stanley and Jack Kirby created the Avengers. They were the first to assemble. So, um, basically there's like a huge freaking civil war going on. And the Shadow, Cur yeah, the Shadow Colonel and the Legion of the Unliving, they seem to be the big problem here. Um, the These guys are all vampires and they're not like dracula's son and all that stuff that's a entirely different group this is this is a group that's just out to cause chaos they want to cull the weak so that the strong can persevere and then the only stock that will exist will be the, the greatest you know the uh it'll be a vampiric version of the survival of the fittest you know uh and, and that's a cool concept i totally dig that uh blade is here blade is <clears throat> on the team, on the Avengers team. But for the most part, he's almost just a distraction. It should be understood that more than anything else, this is indeed a Ghost Rider book. This is badass, dude. There's a whole bunch of cool scenes in here. Thor doesn't get too much. He mostly gets, you know, laughed. Uh, not, not laughed. He mostly just gets kind of like, you know, I'm tough. Yeah, but it's not you they're afraid of. Huh? Um, She-Hulk has a funny line or two. You know, that's really it. Um, Iron Man, you see a difference between a rich man named Iron Man, Tony Stark, and a king named T'Challa, Black Panther. You get to see that heavy is the head that wears the crown. The difference between these two, two people, one who just rationalizes everything, and then it's funny later on because he can rationalize what he does. And then T'Challa, who takes everything that he does that goes against his moral codes as a personal failure. That is a great juxtaposition between these two. I love that Jason Aaron had that scene in here. Another scene that I loved in here was the Captain America scene, where he's fighting, he's got the shield in one hand and a big brass cross in the other. Actually, it's probably bronze. But anyway, whatever it is, no, maybe bronze, whatever, who cares? The fact is, he's about to kick some booty. And the vampires are scared. And I love seeing the vampires scared of Captain America. And the comment that they make about him not having been in church for a long time, the reason why he hasn't been in church for a long time, is pretty solid. Personally, I remember kneeling a lot when I was in the military. But <laughs> it's, it's cool. Like, it's Captain America. I get it. He's always on the move. So it's cool. It's cool. That's one of the reasons why in the military, and he was in the army, I'm in the army, you know, uh, we used to have field chaplains. We didn't have to go to a church to visit a chaplain. The chaplains came to us in the field. That was kind of cool. Anyhow, um, this is, like I said, it's a Robbie Reyes book more than anything else. And, ooh, uh, Uncle Eli is mentioned in this. I know there's a couple of people who are a little bothered that he hasn't been mentioned once and the car doesn't talk to him. The whole story seems to have been changed, the origin story. Maybe. But uh, Robbie points out that the car used to always talk to him and he's trying to talk to the car now. And Eli Morrow is mentioned. So, yeah. Again, the story was planned on being changed by the original creators of Robbie Reyes. Uh, they just never got the chance to because they were extending the story too long and it wound up getting canceled in the second run, you know, like its first run. It is what it is. In the meantime, I'm cool with this story, how it's developing right now. This is interesting. Um, Zarathos is mentioned. A couple couple of demonic entities are mentioned in this and it's whatever. It's cool. I digs it. Um, the end was particularly interesting. I wonder if I've got my, yep, I got it right here, in fact. I don't want to mention any names about uh, who shows up at the very end, but talking about vampires, I've just, you know, pff, you know uh, Prince of Wallachia, and, yeah, that guy, he shows up. And um, it was interesting what happened. And I'm just saying that where he decides to show up is likely going to change the entire power dynamic of that place that he shows up. 
and the superheroes who are there and who really want something to do. I don't know where this comic book is going to go, but I've got an idea, and I love it. This was a badass comic book, and I'm definitely digging this. Is this a, a jumping on point? In some ways, I would say yes. Look, it's going to be confusing, but, but, like I say all the time, jump on the comic book, enjoy. You got a rehash of Blade's origin story here. You've got the beginning of a new understanding of um, Ghost Rider's origin. At the very least, Robbie Reyes of the Ghost Riders. Um, oh, and the, the comment in the beginning of the little ghost in the snow, that was from an earlier issue of the uh, Avengers, this this run, in case anybody had forgotten. So I would say that this could be a jumping on point if you can be patient enough to just read and then as you come across certain questions, ask people who would know and do a little research on the internet. And I think that you will be perfectly fine. I dig how this comic book title by Jason Aaron has many minor jumping on points because that's always important. First, you know, every comic book you make is somebody's first comic book. This could be somebody's first comic. In fact, it's chances are this is absolutely somebody's first comic book. And I think if you're patient, you'll be all right. All right, guys, Professor Bill Comic Book University, class dismissed.